What important areas or features are protected? To provide clarity around the importance of the district's landscapes and features, parts of the district have been classified. The highest level of protection are outstanding natural landscapes and outstanding natural features. These are matters of national importance under the RMA. A lower level of protection includes rural scenic landscapes and significant natural features. These are of local importance to the district and are sometimes termed amenity landscapes. The outstanding landscapes and features are provided with the most protection. Buildings and structures typically require a resource consent. Earthworks are permitted for the maintenance of a range of farm tracks and structures, but all other earthworks will require a resource consent. Plantation forestry, carbon forestry, intensive farming and planting of wild and conifer species are prohibited activities. Significant features and the rural scenic landscapes have fewer restrictions than the outstanding landscapes and features. However, resource consent may still be required for some land uses. We acknowledge that much of the land covered by these is in private ownership and people will have concerns about further restrictions on the future use of their land. Please check the maps out and associated rules. We are here to help you and understand what these all mean. How are we looking after our native plants and animals? Hi, my name is Max Crow, Biodiversity Advisor for the Waitaki District Council. We're talking about significant natural areas what they are, how they're identified, and the opportunities and challenges that they present for landowners in the district. More than 100 threatened species in the district, and a lot of them at low altitude, which is also where the majority of private land ownership tends to be. Biodiversity doesn't just occur on conservation land, and private landowners also have a big role to play in protecting our natural heritage. A significant natural area can be defined in many ways, but there's four main priorities in the Waitaki Biodiversity Strategy that are a useful guide. A land environment with less than 20% indigenous vegetation remaining is considered a priority. A indigenous vegetation associated with wetlands and sand dunes, as well as originally rare ecosystems such as those associated with limestone, uh, moraine surfaces and alluvial outwash. And of course the habitats of threatened species. Chances are if you've got a significant natural area on your property then you already know about it. The Waitaki District has been undertaking these surveys for the last eight years and has commissioned consultants to go all across the district identifying and surveying these significant sites. Are we doing enough to protect waterways? We hope so. Riparian margins have a high level of natural character and provide important habitats for flora and fauna. New development and structures can depreciate the natural character of these riparian margins. Earthworks and removal of indigenous vegetation from riparian margins can damage the natural character which affects our water quality and the ecosystem. This enables erosion and floods to occur more frequently. Activities including construction of new buildings or vegetation clearance undertaken in riparian margins would require a resource consent if they were not carried out by councils or do not meet the certain standards. Although vegetation clearance for the repair and maintenance of existing and lawfully established tracks, yards, irrigation, infrastructure and fences would not need a resource consent. Planting indigenous vegetation which preserves legal access to the river, lake or wetland would be a permitted activity. Waitaki's lakes and rivers are enjoyed by many communities and visitors to the district. They also support the breeding of nationally and internationally recognised birds and support salmon and trout spawning. Some recreational and commercial activities can affect our lakes and rivers, such as structures and swing moorings that reduce public access to the water, the availability of space and changes to the natural character of the lakes, rivers and their margins. The use of powered craft can also have noise effects that are sometimes unsuitable for the surrounding environment. Important values to mana whenua are also held in the lakes and rivers of our district, Many water bodies held Taonga species of special significance to local iwi, as well as represent historic gathering places to exercise kaitiaki, the guardianship, and maheke kai, customary food gathering. Consideration also needs to be given to the Waitaki Power Scheme that operates within and alongside the Waitaki lakes and rivers. The recommended provisions are more restrictive than the current plan for the use of powered vessels. 
Commercial activities that take place on water bodies would require a resource consent. Controls to protect fish spawning and bird breeding values are also being suggested. Structures and swing moorings that pass across or through the water would also require a consent. Are these things that you would support or not? Let us know. Who's going to pay for all of this? That's a great question. As a future generation, I'm worried that our wonderful environment might be compromised and we need to be prepared for climate change. Sure, I get that people need to make a living from their land and they will also be responsible for looking after the special parts for us all. They have been doing this already for most part. There are a few financial incentives for looking after these features. However, there are potential benefits to be gained as well, such as film sets, on-site accommodation and other tourist activities that are compatible with the land. There may be the ability to seek other incentives, such as development rights or rates relief. Do you think these have merit? If so, let us know.